Well, actually, in the past, we have had charts of sorts, which effectively, if I'm quite honest, have been just like a bit of gr a graph paper. Um, the reason I think it's not been done before, actually having something which is truly evidence-based, um, the reason it's not been done before, I think, is the complexity of modelling growth in dogs. Um, you need a big population, um, you need to try to ensure they're healthy, um, and then you need the right mathematical techniques. So it's a big body of work to do. Um, and that's probably is in a nutshell why we've had that challenge. So you're basically plotting a puppy's growth mm. against some, some recognised curves that yeah. should suggest healthy growth. What happens if the puppy is deviating from mm. that path? Yeah, yeah so, the, so the, the centile curves on the chart will reflect what is thought to be optimal growth. Deviations, I guess, can occur, occur in, very ways, um, in various ways. The, the, the one that we would, um, I guess, advise vets to, to look for are crossing of centiles. Um, so for example, um, from the studies we've done, we know that um, dogs that cross centiles upwards, particularly two or more centiles, are going to be more at risk of becoming overweight or obese. And that's also the, the characteristic we see in some uh, developmental orthopaedic diseases. Okay. Conversely, dogs that um, cross centiles downwards might be underweight or, again, have, a, have other illnesses. So I think the opportunity um, for the vet is to be spotting possible deviations at an early stage. Um, it doesn't mean to say there's a problem, but it's just a wake-up call to say, let's have a look at this, um, let's discuss nutrition and, and you know, see, see really whether there's something we need to look into. Now, we know pet obesity yeah. is a massive problem at the mm -hmm. moment. Uh, how is this approach better than a vet simply mm. saying, your mm. puppy is fat? Um, I think one of the things that this can do is, uh, is provide some um, precision in terms of, of measurements. I mean, the, the, the call from a vet about whether a, um, a, a dog is overweight is currently more subjective. Um, the body condition score is good, but it's not perfect. When we're looking at weights and deviations from a chart, I think there's a degree of precision. One of the big things, though, I think that vets struggle with is um, the ability to have that conversation at all. It's a concern. They don't want to um, upset the owner or lose the owner as a client. Um, so I think one of the great things here is if you're talking about, you know, showing a chart and you're talking about a weight versus a line, you're taking out the obesity issue altogether at that point. You're just saying, we need to look at this and we need to have, have a thought. And I think it allows a vet then to, to sort of frame an approach to a health strategy much more effectively. But this is, this is just yeah. one tool, right? Yeah. I mean, we, need a, we need a much broader approach to pet obesity. Yeah, I agreed. So the, are, are the charts going to cure obesity? No, they're not. But one of the things that we know from, um, and certainly in the studies, for instance, I've done on, on obesity and weight management is we're not perfect at treating it. Um, so we know, you know if we're doing well, about half of the dogs we put on a weight program will lose weight. So my worry is if we wait till they're fat, it's too late. Um, here, um, we can at least have conversations early on um, and try and make adjustments early on. Um, the other thing, of course, by monitoring healthy growth, and if you know an individual gets to their adult weight at a particular weight, then you can just carry that weight forward again as another precise means of monitoring for the future. So it's, I guess we're looking more towards prevention rather than cure, and it's the rest of the vet skills that will actually help to deliver that. And would you encourage owners to measure and weigh their own dogs um, themselves? I think it would be better to do it in conjunction with a, with a vet professional. And that way we can ensure that um, the measurements are taken accurately, hopefully on calibrated equipment. Um, it also means that the vet professional is best advised to discuss what that means. You know, is your dog healthy? You know, even healthy dogs can bounce around in their chart. And there's a, you know, if, if an owner themselves, they may be fearful something's happening when it's not. So they can provide reassurance, but on the other token, if we know that there are true deviations which could signal a problem, the vet's in the, the best position to deal with it. Mm -hmm.